Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome guys My name is Yaqad Zaman, hope you guys are having a fantastic day, enjoying yourselves Alright, so Welcome guys um, Normally I do live streams on Saturday But unfortunately yesterday I was uh, at a radio station appeal and then I had to go for dinner So I wasn't able to make it But alhamdulillah I'm here today, Sunday it is and inshallah, some of you guys are going to be happy that I have come on so you guys can ask your questions. Some of you guys are probably thinking, ah, oh, again, we have to see him again. Abu Bakr, wa alaikum as salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ahlan wa sahlan, welcome. HY Tube, wa alaikum as salam, Fresh Prince, ahlan wa sahlan, mashallah, mashallah, wa alaikum as salam, wa barakatuh, ahlan wa sahlan. شرف لنا بك يا سيدي أهلا وسهلا وشرف لنا ولكم وعليكم السلام رونا ما شاء الله long time my brother Rona what's the latest bro long time you disappeared bro alright so let's crack on with these questions then wasting no time at all straight straight to the to the juicy questions I'm just uh... <sighs> fixed right there we go now why is this one on right there we go lights are on now it's a bit more cozy and entertaining all right so now I've got some curious cats questions from last week as well, which I didn't answer. So inshallah, I'm gonna try to knock them out as well. Like I want to. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to go on. I'm supposed to go on to Instagram as well, guys. I'm forgetting the Instagram people. They're probably gonna start getting upset. You guys used to these live streams and you don't come on. Okay, let's check this out. Let's see if I still want my stuff working. Okay, let's go then. I don't know why this has moved slightly. All right, so Ahla wa Sahlan, welcome everybody on, on Instagram as well. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day as well. All right, you guys got already got some questions on the screen. Uh, SCU, alaikum salam. What's the view on carrying out khatams appropriate uh, uh, apportioning an amount for Quran to different people? Yeah, so if a person was to finish the entire Quran, that is considered permissible. If multiple people will finish a Quran khatam, that would be considered permissible. Um, so both are considered permissible, as in there is no prohibition for multiple people to do khatams. And we see this, for example, in Tarawih as well. We see this in Tarawih, where there's going to be several Imams leading the Salat and several of them will do the Khatams. Totally fine. Mr. Hey, wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan. Which books Arabic should one start with for the study of Balagha? Additional question, what is your view and opinion on the study of Quran? The study of Quran? So first of all, Balagha, I would say, definitely do my two courses on Balagha. So I've got two courses, this on uruk.com. So if you look on the tick at the bottom, you'll see uruk.com. If you go on there, there's two courses. One is called Ilmul Ma'ani, and the other one is called Ilmul Badi and Bayan. Right, so you do those. Um, so it depends how deep you want to go into Balagha, actually. It depends how deep you want to go. If you want to go, just kind of understand, be able to understand and identify the Balagha points in the Quran, then definitely I would say, Study the works of uh, uh, Abu Musa Muhammad. Yeah, uh, so he's a, a scholar in Egypt, and um, also Sheikh Fadl Samurai. 
so there's other contemporary books that are very easy to read, definitely. But I benefit 100, 100% I benefit from them. And uh, also, Fadl Abbas, Sheikh Fadl Abbas, his works as well. These are three people, contemporary people, whose works are very beneficial. As for if you want to go deep into it, you want to try and like understand the, the nuances, you want to understand why they came out with these rules, the different madhabs in Balagha, then definitely you have to you have to study Ijazul uh, 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 Balagha, yeah, um, which is by Al Imam Al Jurjani. Also, you have to read sections of Kashaf by Zamakshari. Definitely, you have to read that to, to really appreciate Balagha points. Um, yeah, and then if you want, obviously, Miftah Al Ulum, Talkhis Al Miftah, and then Sharh Maanil. Al Mutawal Wal Muqtas Al Maani, these two books by Tatazani, and reading those as well would be. But those, that's if you want to go to, uh, I haven't really met anyone that really wants to go at that deep level because that's more like trying to understand the nuances of why they came out with these rules and how these rules. Some scholars uh, study Quran, I haven't seen it, I wouldn't be able to say. Some scholars praise it, some reject it, and some say it has some issues. I have not checked it out myself, so I wouldn't be able to comment. Sajid wa alaikum salam. I just want to give you a thank you for helping me get closer to my deen. As a few years ago, I'm watching your Quran videos. And alhamdulillah, I'm able to read the Quran. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, mashallah. This is very good news. It makes me so happy when I hear people benefiting from the videos and being able to learn the Quran, which is one of the main aims of my channel. So Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you, my brother Sajid. Arabic with Suhail, wa alaikum as wa wabarakatuh. I teach a small Arabic class of six students and there are three students who don't put in enough effort in. Shall I have a private word with them? Yes, definitely. Because the thing is, especially if you want to teach the Arabic language and you've got a class and you've only got a few, a few people, the class needs to be motivated. Sometimes what happens is students might not have the motivation or they might get burnt out after a while. Many reasons. So I would say definitely have a word with them. See, see what they say. Uh, I've been busy, but I watched some of your videos. Ahla wa sahlan, mashallah. Ahla wa sahlan. TMZ, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Could you explain the different specialisms within the Islamic tradition and lands where they specialize? In the I heard that if in Egypt for I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know exactly which part of the world their specializations. I wouldn't be able to say. Um, because I haven't really studied in these places to be able to say that. There are individuals around the world who are well known um, so that's that's a different thing the, the, see the problem is with people saying there's these specializations that the best like for example someone might say the best studies of I don't know Maliki Fik might be in Mauritania I don't know is that the true I, I have no idea uh, some people might say oh the best studies of Hanafi Fik you might find in Jordan I don't know if that, that's necessarily true or not maybe other places where Hanafi Fik is also so it, the the I would generally say that if you want to know the stereotypes, the stereotypes are generally that if you want to understand, if you want to go through the Siha Sitta cover to cover, then in Indian subcontinent would probably be the best place, right? Because they do it thoroughly, but they don't do it in depth generally. A few people might do it in depth. Um, if you want to go through things like Shafi Fik, then possibly Azhar, Egypt, or maybe even Yemen. Um, and then if you want to go through maybe like Maliki Fik, then maybe, I don't know, maybe Azhar as well, maybe Libya, maybe Mauritania. I'm not too sure exactly where the specializations are. Um, but the specialisms in Islam, I mean, I, there's nothing really to explain about the specialism in Islam. It's just that there's Fik and you can become an expert in Fik. And there's Hadith and then you can become an expert in Hadith. And there's Tafsir and you can expert in Tafsir. So I don't really exactly know. Uh, how to answer that one. If a person is praying for salah and forgets which rakat he's in, would what should he do? Restart the salah, whole salah. If it's the first time it happens, restart the whole salah. If it's not, then uh, do sajda sahwa at the end. Have you heard of the Quran as revealed by Mufti Menk? No, I haven't. Is it mandatory that a Muslim studies the companions of the Prophet and what and the kinds of traits they had? Not necessarily. Muta'alim wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mr. H. Zakallah uh, khair, you're welcome. Olivia wa alaykum as-salam. 
Abu Bakr, regarding Friday sessions, you mentioned a scholar should follow a madhab. What if the only scholar you have access doesn't follow a madhab and isn't qualified to do tarjih? So, if hypothetically you live in a non-internet world, well, then there's only your local desert imam to follow, then just follow what he ever says. That's the only scholar that you have. But because nowadays there's access to scholars around the world and there's, you know, it's like very difficult for a person to say there's no access to scholars. I mean, I don't know, maybe there are some places. I was born with no value as a daughter. I truly, I true that only Allah will value me. Maybe there is a value for you, my, my sister. Maybe there are many people out there who value you. It's just sometimes maybe they don't say anything. That's the thing. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everyone. Everyone that does good, Allah does not waste their actions. Remember that. But the thing we have to realize is there could be people out there in the world who do value us, but they just don't express themselves. Sometimes some people, they need that regular reminder. Yeah, And unfortunately, some people probably are a bit too quiet or they don't even think that maybe other people need a remind, need like this uh, praising, you can almost say. Yeah. Uh, SC1 by Khatam, I meant some cultures do a gathering and request people to recite a certain amount of Quran so that the people they do it for barakah and sometimes send the reward. Yes, nothing, nothing wrong with that. It would be permissible as long as people do not assume that this is something necessary to do. What would advise someone who wants to learn fiqh, etc.? What books would you recommend to read? So, I, I can only tell you about Hanafi fiqh. If you want to learn Hanafi fiqh, then I would say. First of all, start off with studying a text like Quduri. Then maybe you move on to something which is um, a bit more advanced than Quduri. Maybe Lubab, the commentary of Quduri. Maybe even something like the Ikhtiyar. And then after that, maybe you move on to something like um, uh, Hidayah. Yeah, and then after that, you can with Hidayah, you can supplement that with Kanzu Daqai. You can supplement it with Sharh al on the side yeah and then finally maybe you move on to Bahr al-Raiq you move on to Fat al-Qadir you move on to Rad al-Muhtar so I would say those are the kind of states so Quduri then after Quduri you move on to Lubab or Ikhtiyar and then after that you move on to something like Hidayah and then with that you supplement it with other books around that level and then you move on to Bahr al-Raiq or Rad al-Muhtar <clears throat> what is the exact uh, what is exactly meant by marriage completes half your deen what if someone never is married so marriage completes half your deen basically means those things in your deen which require the presence of a wife yeah so for instance like when it comes to protecting yourself from from sexual desires fulfilling your desires those kind of things so half does not necessarily mean like half as in 50% exactly. Half is like a, a large chunk of it. So if there's two people, both of them live their life till the age of 80. One of them gets married, one of them doesn't get married. It's possible that the one that, that, that got married, most likely the guy that got married is going to be protected from a lot of fitness in the world. That's what you have to remember. A lot of the fitness in the world this guy's been protected from simply because of the marriage. There's a lot of situations in life that the wife will give support to the husband. She'll strengthen the husband. The husband will have a purpose of earning for the family. right? And the guy who doesn't get married, then it's very, very likely that there's going to be quite a lot of tests and tribulation that he's going to face that a married man wouldn't get. That's the idea. I teach students age 10, 13, but I realize that students never respect ilm and teachers. What should I do? Even they don't care about lies is going for them. How we teach them respect. So the thing about respect is respect is not taught in a classroom. Respect is shown. So I would say this year, when you ever you're gonna teach, like, imagine it for parents, for example. How did your parents teach you respect? Obviously, besides the slaps and the and, and, and whatnot. But we're saying that generally respect is shown when you bring the the awe of something into their hearts. You have to bring the respect of the Prophet into their hearts, you have to bring the respect of Allah into their hearts. By teaching them the importance of these things, giving them stories about the Sahaba, giving them stories about the Prophet and having mannerisms with them as well. Yeah, so I think that that's probably the most important thing. It's difficult sometimes when 
when parents don't help the, the mosque teachers. So I think that's probably one of the most important things. I don't know, anybody else got any, any tips on uh, inculcating this in them? Uh, what rights do grandparents have? Uh, grandparents, uh, I mean, they don't really have any specific rights. As in, but if they obviously are in need, then the children and grandchildren need to financially support them, be there for them, take care of them. Miqid, wa alaikum salam, on Insta. What should I think when I pray? I feel like it's a bit hard because I can't read Arabic only. So what I would suggest is before you actually pray, do dhikr of Allah. Sit down five or ten minutes and do the qur'an of Allah, read the Qur'an. And that way what happens is this will create inside of your heart the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, awe. And then when you pray salat, it has an effect. Maybe you want to listen to a powerful talk. How do you teach Arabic in terms of structure, language, grammar, literature? So the way that you teach it, I would say, the way that you teach it is... Um, what you want is what, what do you want to teach Do you want to teach Arabic grammar Do you want to teach comprehension Do you want to teach spoken Arabic There's many different fields of, of Arabic What you need to focus on Is the thing that you want to do What is the thing that you want to do So you're going to do that basically So I would say if you want to for example Like focus on Arabic Spoken Arabic Then the lessons need to be More engaged in speaking with the student Start off with small sentences, start off with singular words, and then make them into compound sentences. And then, you know, give lots of examples and where you have a lot of listening and, and repetition in those lessons. If you want to learn Arabic grammar, then you start off from, from basics, being able to understand a rule and being able to understand what the words mean. My course, the Quranic Arabic 17 lessons is, I would say, is the, is the best thing to start from. The yeah, Quranic Arabic 17 lessons, start from that. And then after that, you get the students to read as much as they can. Read and comprehend as much as they can. By the way, you look very tired. May Allah grant you. Ameen. So I think it's a bit cold today. My arthritis, it plays up in the, in the cold. So uh, my joints get fatigued. So I get sore, sore joints. Jazakallah khair. Ameen. For your du'as. Is Quduri not a bit advanced for general layman? No, no, no. no. Quduri is actually designed... So the... Gududi is not a book that is meant to be taught, like for example, to the public. We're talking about if a person who wants to study structure Hanafi fiqh, where do you start from? Gududi is the best thing. The reason why Gududi is the best thing because Gududi, for someone who has a clean slate in their mind, they don't have no idea of Hanafi madhab, Gududi presents to them the most official positions in the Hanafi school. Now, look at this. If you study another book besides Gududi, which does not necessarily represent the official position Hanafi school. Okay, some views in there are the official ones. Some views are in there are later views. Mixture, mixture, whole mixture of different views over the years. It's difficult for the for the student to understand which views were the original views in the Hanafi school, and then which ones were later on adjusted or adapted over the years. And the thing, second thing about Kuduri, why Kuduri is very important, is because Kuduri basically. It has to be taught in a certain way. It can't just be translated. You can't simply just teach the student and say, okay, um, this, you know, this, 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 this. You understand it? All right, let's carry on. No. Kuduri has to be engagement. You have to engage with the students in Kuduri. You have to present an argument. This is the masala that they had. right? And this is how they engaged in the masala. This is the different possibilities of how to look at the masala. Why did the Hanafis choose this for? Very basic sort of like explanation. But you're presenting to them the foundations. Unfortunately, a lot of places I've seen, Kuduri is simply just taught as people would teach, I don't know, some some small little manual in Hanafi fiqh. It's just basically translated, a misal is given, and then carry on. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of how what I do on my Kuduri videos. But if I was to teach Kuduri properly, 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 like how I do it with my full-time students, I have engagements with them, I explain to them. Right. So we try to understand. Why Imam Quduri is saying this for? Work, Perku alaykum salam. Some salah questions, if it's okay. If salah time overruns while in salah, at what point is considered you have made it? I understand. Uh, so, if if you go over salah time, 
Yeah, if you go over Salat, so for example, let's say Asr starts at 3 o'clock and you started your Zuhr at 2.58 and you've done one rakat or two rakats, then that Salat has become void. You have to restart the Salat again. It's Qadha. The only time that is considered to be allowed to go over the time is for Asr Salat. Asr Salat is the only Salat. In classical fiqh books, it is said that a woman can do sa'i in Umrah or Hajj even if she is in menstruation. But some people are saying that nowadays it is part of the masjid. Are both views still legit? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really kind of uh, come across that. I wouldn't be able to say. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if the Saudi, if the, if the, if they can still consider the 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 mas'a part of the part of the masjid or not. So I wouldn't be able to say. But generally, if it's not part of the masjid, then even if the Hanafi say, even if it is part of the masjid and she does do sa'i, her sa'i will be accepted. But there obviously will be sin in the sense that um, she's entered the masjid in the state of menstruation. Say you skipped a verse accidentally and remembered during sajda that the verse was if you correct it in your second ruku, do you still need to do sajda sahu? Skipped a verse accidentally? No, you don't, you don't have to. It's fine. Skipping a verse does not affect your salat. If you forget surah in third or fourth rakat sunnah sajda sahu, yes. Reading a surah accidentally a bit before Fatiha, Sajda Sahu. If you've read three verses or more, then you have to Sajda Sahu. Shaykh, how do we encourage the youth to be more intimate with their deen, specifically Salat? The thing is, with youth, you have to understand there are a lot of challenges that the youth have, especially when it comes to living in the West. I would say the best thing to do is you need to emotionally attach the youth to the deen. Take them for Hajj and Umrah. Take them to events. Get them to sit in talks. Get them to have football matches. Basically, you, you, you need to show the youth that they are loved, that, that, that you're there for them. That is probably the most important thing, I would say. And a lot of people think, no, just just give put Mu'lan al Jameel onto all the youth and let them listen to it, and that's it, they love the deen. That's not necessarily the case. That's, that's, a, that's a bit sort of like, uh, you know, what's the word for it? That's sometimes even a burnout for them as well. They get bored of it. What do you think about reading Surah Saad every day to get married with someone who has good akhlaq? I have no idea. I've never come across that. It's, I've never come across it in hadith or anything like that, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Um, if you find it works for you, then go for it, read it. Do you know any popular Islamic baby names at the moment? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Miqdad, Salman, Abu Darda, uh, Sa'ad, Sa'id, Abu Talha. Yeah, so there's loads of Sahaba names. What I would suggest you do is if you go into YouTube and type in Sahaba names, Sahaba names. Yeah, so then inshallah, inshallah, you'll find some. Uh, Fresh Prince Ahlul Wasai said, In Takun Lika Um Um Bahru Deen Imam Al Azam Abi Hanifa Mada Sataf Al Mada Satakul Mahu In a Tha Mahu Mada Satasadhu. So if I was to question asking is if I was to meet one of the Imams like Imam Hanifa son, what would I ask him? Where would I go with him? I think I would probably go wherever he wants to go. Wouldn't be able to take him anywhere that I would want to go. Uh, and I think I would ask him, I would probably ask him, uh, it's a tough question, I haven't really kind of thought about this. I think I'd probably ask him what are the most important things for a student to understand if they want to specialize in the deen. What's the most important thing that they found that person needs to understand to understand the deen? I think that, that probably would. I don't know, what would you say? Is Dua Qunut recited before or after Ruku in Witr? Hanafi say it's before. And it's, Hanafi says better before. And it's actually, you don't do it after. Sometimes at work, it's quiet. At these times, I take it easy and sometimes do other things whilst keeping myself available. Should anyone call or need me, am I sinful for doing this? As long as your boss is okay with it, then it's fine. Of course, there will always be little things that can be done at work. It's similar to when we are in the office and we are talking with colleagues. Yeah. So long as the boss is okay with it, as long as that's part of your contract and they're okay, it's fine. 
Actually, work time in the office is never stipulated seven hours, it's much less. What is a good tafsir on Quran for layperson? I would say Ma'arif al Quran is quite long. If you want a shorter one, then Noble Quran by Mufti Taki Uthmani. What do you say when you undress both A'udhu and Bismillah or just one? I haven't come across anything to say when you undress. I don't know if anyone knows. Uh, your beard has increased since last time. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. That's the ni'mat of hair growth, my brother. <laughs> what happens if you started Salah but halfway through realized you didn't make a proper niya of whether you are praying Fard or Sunnah? Do you have to restart? Then you got to restart. You mentioned about having a specific goal when starting ilm. What was your goal when you started? I had no goal. That was a strange thing, which I realized now I wish I had a goal. So in the beginning, all I wanted to do is become a scholar, whatever that meant. I just wanted to become a scholar. That was my goal. Actually, no. My goal was that I wanted to understand the deen. That's, it was a very vague goal. I wanted to understand the deen. I don't know exactly know what that means. I, I want to understand the deen. But yeah, it was a bit um, strange. So I think if you're going to start knowledge, you need to... The thing with starting knowledge is I, I, I'm slowly building up like a whole... Uh, trying to make a whole series. Inshallah, I'm building up a whole list of things which I'm going to cover in a series about ilm. There are also some things that students actually, they come with a baggage they come with from before because of past experience with other groups and mindsets. And, and when they start studying knowledge, for them, there's a lot of challenges as well unpacking a lot of things that they've had from the past and then trying to so i think that's one of the goals that sometimes people might have they don't realize it so these are some goals that people might have um another thing is also that when you're studying you have to understand that that knowledge has a purpose which is to serve the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. so you have to understand you are going to become someone who is going to have a responsibility on them on their shoulders as well. So having a responsibility and people say, oh, I'm too scared of responsibility. I don't want that. But but that's 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 silly that is. That's like trying to say, I want to study medicine, but I don't want to help people. Right? It's a kind of like a strange, it's a strange kind of mindset to have. So learn the knowledge, but remember that you want to learn knowledge and you want to pass it on to other people as well. Is it wrong to dry a limb while still doing wudu, e.g. at work and need to do full work? No, it's permissible. Haza ahla wa sahla wa alaykum as salam. Is question now permanent on Sundays? No, it's just one off. One off, my brother. MashaAllah, Amjad Ilahi ahla wa sahla. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair for your kind donation, my brother. Amjad Ilahi. May Allah bless you, my bro. May Allah keep you happy. Thank you for your kind donation, bro. I speak with a teacher. Three. I had a chaiwala yesterday. I had like a big cup of chaiwala. And like my brain was like just awake. I speak with the teacher three hours a week and understand the main parts, but I struggle to make form a sentence even though I have a lot of words. Is that because I need to read more? Yeah, read and write more. Yeah, read and write. Start reading and start writing and read things that's outside of your comfort zone. Don't just read things that are in your comfort zone. Try to read things that are hard for you. Yeah, read magazines, read newspapers in Arabic, novels in Arabic. Read tweets in Arabic as well, if you're on Twitter. Salam, what should a person do if he has missed his Zuhur Salah and he intends to offer it as Qada, but now it's almost time for Maghrib and he still hasn't offered his Asr Salah, which Salah to do first. So you do your Zuhur first, you do your Asr, then you do your Maghrib. Yeah. Zuhur, Asr, then Maghrib. Now, if obviously you're praying with the Jama'ah and Maghrib time has started, pray your Maghrib with Jama'ah. Then pray your Zuhur, and then pray your Asr, then repeat your Maghrib again. Amjad, ilahi wa alaykum as my beautiful brother. Has a shout out South African lawyers. Yes, my bro, South Africa, you guys. South Africa, now Indonesia as well, mashallah. Uh, is there a way to pray one rakat for Witter? Not according to Hanafi school. Not according to Hanafi school. There's no, Hanafis are basically argue that there's no evidence at all that the prophets have ever prayed just one rakat. It was always connected to Rakats before you. Uh, Mufti Sahib, you mentioned the issue of the rule of traveler applying to menstrual women. Since I know about it now, is it my duty to tell other women in my family? What I would suggest is, um, if you feel as though that they, they are interested in knowing that Masala, explain to them. Definitely. Yes, you should explain to them. 
if they are not interested in that masala, then leave them as they are. Yeah, so because it can become confusing for them, I would say. But yes, you should explain to those people who are interested in understanding the masala. Junaid, ahla wa sahla wa alaykum as salam, brother. Just stop him and say hello, ahla wa sahla, ameen, ameen, my brother. Hope your revision for your exams is going well. These guys have got exams coming up in a week's time. I want to say, if a person suffers from acne and when he grows facial hair, he increases the acne and rash. In such cases, trimming, the, removing the hair permissible. I mean, I don't know exactly how bad acne can become, but if it's something which the beard is aggravating, those parts possibly, then it's possibly to, to, to trim that. When changing, when putting on clothes, you mean? There's a du'a for putting on clothes, donning clothes. But for taking off clothes, I haven't really come across any du'a. If you can find it and, and send it to me, inshallah, I'll have a look. I never knew your salah becomes void the time your salah passes whilst you're in salah, except for asr. I thought as long as you make one rakat. Yeah, that's, that's only applies for asr. Is plucking the eyebrows for men and women sinful? Their reasoning is to be more neat, but I don't know. So if it's to just make them more presentable, then they won't be sensing in there. But if it's to make it thin, thin the eyebrows, then no. Especially for men, if it's going to make them look effeminate, then no. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah zed ahla wa sahlan sangaye khayma zamarur. Have you watched any interesting podcast? I actually, I'm, I'm going to come on a podcast. You know that guy's video I put up the other day? Khasu. Have you learned Arabic with Khasu? So he contacted me. I actually was in the protest yesterday. I went to the protest in Birmingham. And there, this guy, he had a balaclava on. And he was uh, standing there. And he came up to me and he goes to me, Oh, this. He goes, you don't know me, but there's a guy that wants to do podcast with you online. I go, yeah. So I said, okay, give him my number. And he contacted me. So, mashallah, uh, khasu, inshallah, I'm going to do a podcast hopefully this week with him. I don't know if it's live or recorded. And uh, he's going to speak in Arabic and discuss things, inshallah. So, uh, that's going to be one. Have I seen any interesting podcasts recently? Recently, I don't think I have. I haven't really been watching too many podcasts. I've, because I, when I came back from Umrah, when I was in Umrah and I've come back, I've been listening to a lot of Sahih Bukhari, like cover to cover. I've been trying to listen to it as much as I can. So, I get... As familiar as possible with all the hadith. So hopefully, inshallah, I'll try to listen to it maybe, I don't know, 10, 15, 15 times more. And then uh, hopefully I should be able to kind of have an understanding. So uh, that's that's the kind of one of the things that I like doing. I like if I studied something, if I, I like to cover cover it multiple times. Yeah, to become really intimate with it. Before you said that vanilla extract is not permissible since the extraction process involves alcohol. A doctor, doctor has a natural extract uh, ingredients does not show alcohol, but on one of the ingredients is vanilla extract is permissible. So vanilla extract contains up to thirty five percent ethanol in there. That's the thing. Vanilla essence is where there's an extraction process when they use alcohol. The vanilla essence is fine. If something has has in the ingredients vanilla extract, then that that would be permissible to take scholars say. Yeah, but using the vanilla extract itself would not be allowed. If a person wakes up with semen on the clothes but doesn't recall a wet dream, ghusl must be done. Regarding the masala about salah becoming void when the time next salah starts, is that a Hanafi ruling? I don't know the other madhabs, but Hanafi definitely. I always thought as long as you complete one ruku or one rakah, I don't know. I mean, if you can find where, but Hanafis don't say that. Maybe it's a different madhab, I don't know. Allah, Allah knows best. But if you do follow another madhab, make sure you check it out with the scholars of that madhab. That's all I'm going to say. Always, if you've heard something, don't just go by, by what, you, what you think you understood from it. Always get it checked out. Are the ones accepted after Farad Salat? Inshallah. That's, what, that's what's mentioned in some hadith. Are you able to pray Isha till midnight? Yes, Inshallah. If a man, uh, yeah, that mentions removing clothing. I don't know. I mean, I, I, can you, can you, if you can, if you can email it to me, because I don't think you can, you can put links up here, on here, or if you can just copy and paste the Arabic maybe and put it up. 
If a man ties their long hair into a bun or ponytail, is this imitating opposite gender? If it's in a community that it's only women that do this, then it is. Then you're not allowed to do it. Have you seen Sheikh Abdul Majid's podcast? No, I haven't. What is it called? Does he have a name? He does Arabic podcasts. Where do you listen to Bukhari? Is it online? Uh, so yeah. So if you go onto YouTube and you type in at Tajrid al Sahih, Tajrid al Sahih, Masmu'. Type in Masmu'. Sami Ayasma Masmu'. And then it comes up. There's a quite a few. There's a few of them. Is it permissible to recite Quran whilst lying down? Yes. Is it true women can't read horses? Women can't ride horses in the Hanafi Madhab. If so, um, no, they can. Women can ride horses. I think some some people like there's a very very weak hadith that says Laan Allah al-furuj ala suruj, but that hadith is very weak. I, I don't really know where the Hanafis get this from. Maybe it was just like a cultural thing in some societies. It was frowned upon for it wasn't like the dignity of a woman, the honor of a woman for her to ride a horse. But some communities it'd be fine. So it's one of those kind of things. Um, just to clarify by default, everything is halal until proven otherwise. Yes, everything is halal until proven otherwise. Yeah, except for meat and except for marriage. Marriage has to be proven, meat has to be proven. I think uh, I saw another podcast series two of the three kajur. <laughs> I know I need to, you know, but I need to get some new presenters. The old presenters unfortunately can't continue it, so I need new presenters, guys. I need maybe some of you guys who are interested in uh, coming on. Wa alaikum assalam, Muhammad Hassan. Hello, sahla. Thoughts on Mufti Meng? Should we take from him? I don't know him personally. I haven't heard him say anything that's wrong, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's wrong to listen to him. I get paid a day rate regardless of how many hours I do in a day. One hour equals one full day. Uh, seven hours full day rate. Is it bad to claim overtime of one hour knowing you'll get paid for a full day? If it's allowed in the contract or what you're doing and it's not considered deception, uh, cheating, then it's fine. The arrangement isn't specific in the contract as it's just a platform to claim hours. Yeah, so as long as you're not lying to them in any way, then it's fine. Can you send the link here, please, for Bukhari? So, okay, I will send you. There's actually two, there's two links. Okay, so... Okay, so... This one, this is not the full thing. This is, uh, I think, about a quarter of it. Yeah, so one is this one. And one is that. And then there's another one. Uh, I don't know what it is now. Yeah, well, that's one. I can't. The other one I can't seem to find. If I do find it, I'll try to put it up onto Tajri the Sahih. One second. Let me try something else. Muhtasar al Sahih. Okay, it is. Okay, this is the full. This is another one. This is full. Okay, so number two. There you go, my brother. See, the guidance says in the Hanbi school, the only prayer from the Fajr prayers that won't be valid if not finished before there's time is the Fajr prayer. Okay, I've never come across that. Shouldn't be like, does it have an Arabic quote for it or anything? The only prayer that won't be valid if not finished before the exiting. 
time is the Fajr prayer. Witr in Shafi school. So I'll have to look into that. I mean, if you have an Arabic text, I can look into. So Shuram Bulal is obviously a big book. But let me just see if I can uh, do a quick... Uh, uh, let's see. If I see if I can find... I yeah, can't seem to find it. I don't know. Okay, one within a Shafi school. Yeah, I think uh, Shafis possibly have one. I don't know. Maybe you'll have to ask them. Boxing MMA. Ahlan wa sahlan wa alaykum as salam. It's called the Shakeology Podcast with Sheikh Abdul Majid. Okay, I'll have a check of that. If I like someone, Dean, I want him for halal. Can I tell him directly or should I send someone? Yes, you can tell him directly as long as you know it's not going to cause fitna. So I would suggest you get someone asked else to ask yeah just so that there's, there's not that fitna that there might be a, a relationship that start might start between you and him i would volunteer to be on podcast as a presenter inshallah jazakallah khair inshallah i will consider you inshallah my brother arbaz khan with the may or what's more virtuous seeking or voluntary acts of worship seeking virtues of more virtuous seeking so what do you mean by seeking knowledge are you talking about learning knowledge Learning that fard knowledge that required for the deen is absolutely fard upon everyone. Then beyond that, learning the extra parts of the deen is considered more virtuous than praying nothing. Is it permissible to work as a cashier? But they would ha also operate the lottery system for ticket buyers along with the scanning. I would say there'd be some scope there. There'd be some scope. To what extent must we investigate meat being halal, e.g. you go to a non-Muslim restaurant chain and you ask if the meat is halal, is it enough or should yes? Just ask them if it's halal. If they say it's halal and you don't see anything contradicting it, then fine. Eat. Why didn't Sahaba form schools of thought of fiqh and were, or where fuqaha get their principles? So you have to understand, watch my video on the, the history of madhabs and evolution of fiqh. So what basically is, is that when Sahaba were living in their days, their understanding of the deen was simply whatever you asked the Prophet ﷺ, he would answer. So many Sahaba simply just lived in small societies that there wasn't any, any, any sort of drastic change that occurred in their society. So that's why there wasn't really much need to investigate too many things. But as the time was going by, the, the scholars understood, some of the Sahaba understood this as well, that there has to be an understanding, like principles that you have to use in order to understand certain certain Messiah or chapters. That's where these Madhahib stories started to develop from. So, what you, so to understand this question, you have to understand the history of how a science develops. Is it true that women can't touch the Quran while menstruating? That's, true, that's correct. What if she is learning to read the Quran? So if a woman is menstruating, she cannot read the Quran as well. She can't touch the Quran, she can't read the Quran. However, if it's she has to, as in it's something which is going to cause her problems because 
she's trying to memorize the Quran and she's going to forget it. Then what she can do is she can hold the Quran with a cover, get herself an extra cover, and then open it with that, and then with something else she can flick the pages. And otherwise, she probably can use some sort of a tablet, you know, a tablet, like an iPad or something. Where when I'm praying, my hat covers my forehead, so there's a gap in sujood. Uh, of the hat is salat. As long as your head is touching the hat when you do sajda and the hat is touching the floor, then that's allowed. Alaikum assalam, Valerie, ahla wa sahlan, welcome, mashallah. Question If we will, will, will be shown our books in our hands on the day of judgment and nothing will be left out of it, what about sins that you ask forgiveness? Yeah, they'll be forgiven, they'll be wiped out. Yeah, so basically, on the day of judgment, everyone is going to be shown their books, no one is exempted from this. But what's going to happen is it's like your book will be shown to you and then you just go, you swiftly just go through it without there being any sort of like embarrassments or exposures. However, if Allah is going to interrogate you on something, that's where there's going to be embarrassment. This is called the, uh, this is called the ard. Everyone is going to have the ard, they call it ard, the ayn. And then the hisab is the shadid. So this is why the Prophet Sallallahu he used to say, Man husiba uzziba, man husiba uzziba. Whoever is given the hisab will be tormented. Aisha radiallahu said, O Messenger of Allah, but doesn't Allah say that, Whoever is given their book in their right hand will be given an easy hisab. So, Aisha radiallahu the Prophet Sallallahu said, that is the ard, that is where the book is being presented and Briefly, you're gonna just see your deeds presented to you. Like, this is your file. Here you go. This is your file. Does that make sense? Uh, they don't give an exact reference here, so I, I, I'll have to look into it. I mean, I've never come across this masala. I've never come across anyone before before mentioning it there, mentioning it. I was at a halak the other night and heard a lecture. Halaqa the night and her lecture and I wanted to ask but was shy to. Yeah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Hope you understand the answer. Yeah. So basically on the day of judgment, every single person will be given their whole file. Imagine someone's hands you your whole file of your life. Right? And then, you know, some people will have no hisab, meaning they will swiftly go through it without any without any sort of embarrassments. If two people had same shoe slipper and it got accidentally swapped in the mosque. Do you have to return it in the mosque even though your one hasn't been returned? So what, what, if you 100% know the other person's taking it and you're okay and they seem to be okay, then it's fine. Otherwise, technically you would have to go back to the mosque. You would have to hand over the slippers to them because it's an amanana. Or you keep it and you tell the mosque, say, look, I've taken the slippers. If the guy does contact, here's my number. Because it technically belongs to him. Your property is with him. And he should do the same as well. Can you live in a place where there's no mufti? Hope they re you record it. MashaAllah, Allah, be in your presence. MashaAllah, Arbaaz. Arbaaz was with us, MashaAllah. Uh, in uh, Umrah, Arbaaz and his brother. MashaAllah, very nice, very nice company. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you. Hope you're well. Hope you too have recovered. MashaAllah, so nice, very nice. Uh, can you live in a place where there's no mufti? Of course. Of course you can, yeah. But obviously, we're living in a time of social media today, so getting in contact with someone who is knowledgeable is is much easier than than it was in the past. In the in fact, in the past, there were many places where it was difficult to actually get access to a mufti. You'd be surprised. What is the proof that a wife can see her family at least once a week? Um. So so generally, this is considered to be. This is considered to be from the urf, generally. That this would be considered to be something that once a week would be from the urf here. Yeah. What did you mean by there is some scope for being cashier and having to serve? So scope basically means, like, I can't give a 100% answer on this because I'd have to look into other, other issues. But generally, if there is a job and there is no way of getting out of it, if there is a way of getting out of it, you speak to your boss, say, look, I'm not comfortable with dealing with lottery tickets then you, you won't be allowed to deal with them. But if there's no way, and this is the only way you can do this, and this is the only job that you have, and it's difficult for you to find another job, 
That's why I'm saying this scope. So in these kind of answers, you generally notice I do say these, these kind of statements. Possibly it's allowed. There's scope for it. Because in these kind of things, you can't give an absolute answer without knowing all the background details. You're welcome, Valerie. You're welcome. If a menstruating... If a menstruating woman holds a tablet with a Quran app, is any form of covering between the hands and the tablet? So there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars. I would say that it'd be permissible so long as her fingers do not touch the verses of the Quran. Uh, can you pray four sunnahs of Zuhr after Fard Hanafi Fiqh? Yes. Can, have you heard of vocal you can reply to emails using one minute vocal voice notes suggestions in case it may help with lengthy email replies okay okay i'll have to check that out i'll have to check that out uh ameen ameen zakallah khair you're welcome my brother arbaz inshallah come down to birmingham yeah make sure you bring your brother down before ramadan i will meet up is it permissible to say birmingham zindabad of course my brother of course birmingham zindabad Uh, what's your view on Mufti Mek's latest? I have no idea what his last controversy was, or his latest controversy is. Is it allowed to invest trade in companies with halal business but give and take some interest? If it's only a little bit, like it's not the majority bulk of their, their income, then it would be, I would say it'd be permissible. Mariam, if if I like someone, the okay, no, that's not one. Ya Allah. Are sins still wiped where there are witnesses, etc.? Yes. Sins are wiped. Yeah. So you have to. So sometimes see, Toba is different. If you did if you were involved in doing like a public sin, then generally they say you have to make public Toba. Yeah. So for example, like let's say, for example, I don't know, you openly you 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 uh blasphemed or something, right? Naudu billah. You'd openly, in front of people, you'd have to say that you apologize for what you said, you repent, you come back to Islam. Or for example, you back backbite someone. The same thing over there. So if it's an open sin that you've done, ideally the repentance for that would be that you openly ask forgiveness. If it's a secret sin that you've done, then just between you and Allah. yeah. And likewise, if it's a sin that has harmed another person, then you'd have to get forgiveness from them. Um, is there an actual authentic narration that says if you pick up rubbish from the mosque floor, you will get a whole ain? I have never come across that. I never, I never know where they people get that from. Tayyib alaykum assalam. When in Kuduri, the author Ahmad, talks about a dog, goat, and a human falling into the river, does it mean a dead human? Yeah, like dying in the river. Falling and dying in the river. Yahya Khan, can you give a summary of the ruling regarding praying while on a plane sitting down? Yeah, so the ruling on a plane. So look, Hanafis do not have any position with regards to praying on a plane because when they wrote their books, there was no invention of the plane. They never imagined people would be able to hover in air for hours. So they have never mentioned it. Later Hanafis now have now a split. Can you pray on a plane or not? So some of them say, no, you can't pray, pray on a plane because prayer has to be done on something that's connected to the ground. That's what some of them argue. So they say, you don't pray on a plane. You just do qada when you get off. Other groups say, no, you can pray on a plane. Yeah, you can pray on a plane because the idea is not praying on something that's connected to the earth. It's praying on a surface that is stable. And obviously on the plane, you can pray on a surface that's stable. However, do you pray standing or sitting? So you should pray standing. But if you know you can't pray, if you know there's not enough space, it's going to cause massive inconvenience on the plane right? to pray. So you've asked the students, or you know that they're most likely going to say, look, we can't, we can't do it because the flight time is too short or they have to serve dinner. Then pray in your seat. Pray in your seat sitting down, that would be fine, I would say. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Falling into a well. Zakallah khair, Kas. What do you think of the Hanafi position of Darul Harb and how some Hanafi in the UK take this view and give fatwa that there is no riba between us and Harbi? Possibly. So Imam Bu Hanifa, he basically says that the, the Muslim 
who is in Dar al-Harb, he's allowed to take, he's allowed to charge a non-Muslim interest for loans. So let's say there's a Muslim. He comes from a Muslim country, goes to Dar al-Harb. And when he's there, he, he, he opens a business, which he borrows people money, but then takes the money back with extra interest on top. If he does this with non-Muslims, Abu Hanifa Rahimullah says that this is okay, this is allowed. Why does he allow interest in Dar al-Harb, but not in Dar Islam in a Muslim country? He says because the, the protection, the protection of a Muslim's wealth, the protection of a Muslim's wealth is there by Allah. Allah has protected a Muslim's wealth. So riba is, is going against Allah's protection. So that's why you can't, you can't charge people interest, Muslims interest, because you're basically breaking Allah's law. A non-Muslim is not directly protected by Allah. A non-Muslim living in a Muslim country is protected by the state. So the state protects because they are living in the state and they have come with an agreement with the state. Their wealth and their lives and their honor is protected by the state. So you can't harm them via the state. But if it comes to a, a non-Muslim country, then you're allowed to charge them interest because their wealth is not protected by Allah and it's not protected by the state. Can you steal from them? No, you can't steal from them because this is this is deception. You cannot deceive a non-Muslim unless you're in the battlefield. You can't deceive them. You're not allowed to deceive non-Muslims, cheat them, anything like that. This is wrong, totally wrong. Does that make sense? So this is why, like for example, backbiting a non-Muslim in a non-Muslim country is allowed even though we know backbiting is wrong. But the reason is because Allah has not protected their honor in, in the non-Muslim country. So that view is a very strong view and um, it's plausible. Yeah. But again, there are, there are other contemporary Hanafis who take the Abu Yusuf view on this. Abu Yusuf Rahimullah's view is that it's not allowed. In Islamic country, you can't do riba and you can't do riba in non-Islamic country. When making up missed prayers, Fajr, should you pray Sunnah too? No. Unless you have just missed your Fajr and Zohr hasn't started yet. Then you make up the Sunnah and the Fard prayers. Well. So do you eat HFA meat? What is your view on it? Uh, so I do not really have an issue with HFA meat. From what I've read, I've spoken to people, they've said to me that the stunning is not lethal stunning. So I don't have an issue with that. I know some people want to be super cautious and stick with HMC. That's up to you. If you want to do that, that's fine. And I think that, you know, sometimes if you want to be extra cautious, that's good as well. But sometimes what happens is, is that I might go to a place where someone someone did, did dinner for me and they they slaughter, they get HFA meat. And I can't say to them, no, no, I don't eat that. If a person has wudu and another person sees them whilst their aura is not fully covered, does this person wudu break? No. According to Hanafi, Hanafi Madhab, your wudu does not break unless some impurity comes out of your body. If a credit card charges interest whilst you're trying to repay and clear the debt, is it sinful? So if it was something which you're trying your best not to incur, then hopefully it won't be. Ask Allah Tawbah. If it's something you knew you, you were intending to, to get interest, then that's totally sinful. You need to seriously repent, stop, stop using the card like that. Uh, what can I do for extra barakah while pregnant? Read as much Quran as you can. Inshallah. Did women used to pray in mosques during Sahaba time? Yes, they did. Many of them prayed at home. Many of them prayed in the mosque. The make was getting scrutinized for Quran book he publicized and a marriage app. Okay. Right, next. When praying on a plane, could you stand at your seat and do partial ruku? So the Hanafis say, if you can't do full sajda on the ground, you do not have to stand. Standing drops from you. That's what they say. But if you want to do that, and it's possible, I think it's very hard to do so from on the plane. You know, if you've got some good uh, gymnastic skills, then maybe. Slave of Allah, alaykum as I know of a madrasa who is considering not teaching hidayah in the Alimiya program as they say it's not necessary. They will study fiqh al and quduri only thoughts. 
I wouldn't see the thing is there's a lot of alimiya courses. I don't think they should be called alimiya courses. To be to be to be honest, I do not think they should be called alimiya courses. They should be called Islamic courses. They should be called uh, intensive courses. Give it give it a nice name, but don't call it an alimiya because when people say alimiya, there's like a threshold. There's like this understanding of what you're going to hit, right? And students need to have a good understanding of fiqh, a good understanding of hadith, a good understanding of usul. If you're not going to study usul properly, and if you're not going to study hadith properly, and you're not going to study aqidah in detail, you're not going to study fiqh in detail, then don't call in Ali Miyakos, honestly. These are the four sciences, I would say, that need to be studied at a very good level, and maybe bring people in, other expert scholars in, to assess your syllabus. Uh, and, and I think in the future, this is going to be needed in the UK. You are going to need an, a board of scholars, set them up, who can, who, who can you know, uh, provide their services to madrasas and get a stamp, like HMC stamp. <laughs> Seriously, that's what we're going to need. We're going to need like a HMC stamp of madrasas that have, that our people are satisfied, this group is satisfied of scholars, satisfied that this madrasa is is worthy of being called an Alimiyah's course. Inshallah, I think hopefully some people should start that. If a person dies in debt and no one pays his death, will there be continued? Allah knows best. For example, if someone is changing their clothes and they are seen by another person, will they rule the break? No, you won't. Backbiting a non-Muslim is allowed. Yes. As long as they don't live in a Muslim country. With regards to Umar's Harbi question, our local mufti is fatwa that mortgage is there for halal in the UK. If acting on our mufti, will, will it be sinful? Uh, no, you won't be sinful. Yeah. But again, I mean, get it clarified by the mufti. Sometimes what happens is someone says, our mufti says this, but they haven't spoken to him. I would say, speak to that mufti, tell them the situation. So the Hanafis generally talk about, the Hanafis generally talk about, you know, certain scenarios in Dar al That's why it needs to be clarified with the mufti. Speak to him. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brother, Masir Ali. What's happening, bro? It's the latest. You're welcome. Is the Mu'tamad for interest in Dar al given according to Abu Hanifa? Here's where the Mu'tamad did. So this is why Muftabihi is differs from person to person on this issue. Yeah, so, so it depends who you ask. But officially, Abu Hanifa's view is considered to be Imam Ibn Nujayim takes this and many others take this. Uh, some of the others, they don't take it. So this is why when people say the Mu'tamad position, this is a very tricky, tricky statement. When it's a very loaded statement, like, do all Hanafis agree upon a particular view being Mu'tamad or not? That's where many views are Mu'tamad. Everyone agrees, and many views are like a grey area where Hanafis may differ. It's like, for example, the size of the beard. Is it what's the Mu'tamad in the size of the beard? And obviously, that's going to differ. In arranged marriages, the wife may be resistant to accept in her heart, but still proceeds. Is such marriage halal? Yes. Does laughing in salah break your wudu? Yes. If you speak negatively about someone who is loud on the bus, for example, would this be considered backbiting? Like if you're basically saying this person is very loud, it won't be negative. If it's causing a nuisance to people. How can one pinpoint a specific future learning goal if they feel they have no particular aim except to develop yaqeen in their beliefs? It, that, it, I mean, I think that person themselves doesn't really have a goal then. So that's fine. If they just, if they just want to do that, that's fine. They, then they can just, they just want to have that yaqeen. It's totally fine. What's our belief regarding having children and wealth? I heard that in general it increases wealth, but are there exceptions like if the child is born from zina? I don't know, you know. Allah, Allah. I'm not too sure. Uh, have you ever heard talks of Sheikh Anwar Awlaki? Yes. In the olden days when he was allowed to listen to his talks. Yeah. Is it true HFA stunning has high likelihood of killing small animals like chickens but not large animals? I have not heard that. I have not heard that. What I would suggest work perk is contact HFA. Get every rumor out of the way. So you contact directly HFA, speak to them directly and see what they say. Can you do in English in sujood in nafal salat? Honestly, learning kuduri properly as well as sulfik will put you in a better position than the students who study hidayah today in modern religions. 
very true. I like that. I like that 100%. Yeah, it's very, very true. ATL, alaykum assalam. What advice would you give to Alimiyah's graduate who does not have a good grasp of Arabic language? How can they learn it? Should they study Nahu and Sarf? So this is no offense to anyone, but see, this is a typical example of a lot of graduates from our madrasas in the UK. I don't know, maybe in America might be similar, Canada. And I know in Pakistan it's, it's a problem as well. So what's happening slowly now is like slowly there's a shift where students are now just graduating because they know all the all the all the the hoops to 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 jump through in order for them to become an alim or an alima. And they get through it all. And by the end of it, they can't read Arabic newspapers, they can't read Arabic novels, they can't read Arabic literature. If you give them like a book on Arabic history or give them a book on some other topic, you find it very hard. This is why these programs are not designed to produce alims, unfortunately. They just have the skeleton. They just kind of like, unfortunately, I, I mean, I don't want to, you know, suit them. But I think it's they, 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 they feel afraid of changing. They feel afraid of changing. Like if we call our course a non alimia course, oh, we're not going to have Bukhari Khatam. And then it's not going to be a means of um, of attracting parents to send their kids to our madrasa, right? So it's, got, it's a kind of like a marketing strategy. You have a Bukhari Khatam, you invite people to your madrasa, you know, parents want to send their kids there, people want to come because they hear this Bukhari Khatam title. And then the people that join the madrasa automatically think, if I do this many years, I'm going to honestly be a proper good scholar. And unfortunately, it, that's not the case. And even if they really work very hard, the students, they probably won't get more than 60-70% of capacity of, of their potential. Anyway, if a person has gone through there, what should they do? Go through all your books again. But this time, go through it like thoroughly on your own. And if you get stuck in anything, then ask someone. Right? And that's probably the best way to do it, honestly. You'd be surprised. I, have, I teach students in a sofa who have studied in other places, got a certificate of being a Mawlana, like a Mawlana certificate at home, that they're alim, they're in Bukhari Khatam, but they started from year one all over again. Now you imagine that. Big thing, isn't it? So start again. Do all your, but this time do it yourself. Read as much as you can. Honestly, read it as much as you can. Um, but you can do it, inshallah. Don't feel down. If you have gone through this, do not feel down at all. Do not feel down what I've said. I'm just saying this because I just want to put it out there. People don't get upset. People don't feel as though the, the institute has let them down. It is a shame that the institute has not been transparent with them, but that's something you know you gotta you gotta take. Is dyeing the hair the white hair or the beard plucking sinful? I heard that every white hair acts as nur. Uh, it's permissible to pluck it, but it's best to avoid. Yeah. Dying is totally allowed. Salamu alaikum. I was not expecting a stream. And you got a stream. Look at that. You weren't expecting it, but you got it. This is what kind of guy I am. I surprise you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I met you in Bolton at the Sheikh Salah Abu Hajj event. What are your thoughts on his general approach to Hanifi? Um, so from what I've seen, mashallah, very uh, competent, very well versed in the books. Very confident in his in his in his subjects as well. I don't know exactly, like there might be certain things that I might disagree with him on certain points, um, and I did speak to him on, on the side on certain issues. But I would say generally, Mashallah is very very like sincere in his mission. His mission is to really get people to truly understand the Hanafi Madhab. I would say, and you might disagree with him on certain points, which is fine, totally fine. But don't you you can't sort of like ignore the the amazing thing he's bringing to the table. The way that he's trying to remind people about the Hanafi school. Uh, Alhamdulillah. The Mu'tamad changes according to the madrasa and the person you ask. Yeah, that's why it's not Mu'tamad. <laughs> what are wazifas? Wazifas. As in, do you mean like al wazifa in the Urdu wazifa? Yeah, or Arabic one? And the Urdu wazifa basically kind of means like a like an uh, a litany, yeah. So like a little du'a that you read or a zikr that you do. In Arabic, you call it hizb. 
If a person is married but fears having children because of uncertainty and lives his marriage that way, is it sinful? No, you're missing. I think their lectures are like oldest. AAA. Oh, yeah, they call him AAA because, like, obviously, you can't, you can't openly listen to him in the UK. Going back to my question about Hidayah in the Alimia program, do you think that Kuduri is enough? I wouldn't call it, uh, Kuduri is not enough to, for a Hida, Alimia program. No, absolutely not. How much Hidayah or Hidayah is covered at so far? So in the, in, so in the, in the full time, uh, we have, I think probably two thirds of it. Yeah, maybe two thirds of it is covered. Maybe two thirds or three fifths of it. I would say three fifths of it is covered. In the part time, so in the part time, um, halfway in salat is covered. So not that much. So don't do two years. Not that much is covered. But what I do is, I have recordings, and then I give access to recordings, and they cover the rest, or as much as they can through recordings. So I teach on Wednesdays live as well. So I do it, and then I give them recordings. So a lot of the stuff in the sofa as well. What I try to do is supplement it with extra. Extra lessons of recordings that I have And if someone has studied only a little bit of Hidayah Then I would definitely suggest I was, you know, I was thinking about this as well I don't think there's any scholar out there Who is like a really good scholar That hasn't studied on the side Outside of the Madrasa You have, I mean, I would say You probably have to study private studies On the side I studied seven years privately With what I was doing On the side I was also studying privately as well so you have to, I would say, study privately and outside the madrasa if you really want to up your game. Wherever you're studying. Well, I've heard a lot of praise. I think the main thing is, is that we've kind of refined the Arabic a lot. So our students really, by the end of, by the, end of the third year, our students really can, can pick up most books and Arabic books and, and, and understand 90, 80, 90% of it on their own. So we put a lot of effort, mashallah, into, into that. And also we try to get the teachers to focus on certain areas So teachers become more specialized in that particular area So if it's fiqh, it's fiqh If it's hadith, hadith If it's nahu, nahu Ilm al-kalam, ilm al-kalam Like that When is it wajib to pray in jama'ah in masjid? Uh, so there's two positions in the Hanafi school about praying in jama'ah One is that it's wajib, one is sunnah mu'akala So those who say it's wajib, say it's wajib what would fall under backbiting? What is someone said this on the bus but smells bad or they mention negative things done by colleagues at work? So if someone has... So backbiting is... The definition of backbiting is this. That's what the hadith says. Mentioning something about someone else which they dislike. However, the Hanafis have said that if a person mentions something negative about someone else because it's a way of sort of like Protecting other people from their, their harm Or to educate someone about something very important Or that's the only way to identify them Or it's something where someone's asking you about some That particular individual about like a, a job or a, or a marriage prospect Then for that particular purpose it won't be classed as backbiting That's what it is Generally if you're in doubt just don't talk about them That's the rule If you're in doubt about something so let's say, for example, there's someone who really smells bad. And you go, look, you know what? This guy really smells bad. Yeah, that's because the thing that they're doing is affecting everyone. If it's affecting everyone, then it wouldn't come under backbiting. Uh, wa alaikum as salam sahla, my brother Bima. Hassan, wa alaikum as salam Nearly finished the Surah Yasin course after three years, I think. I've... Ahla wa sahla, mashallah, mashallah. May Allah bless you, my brother. You know, the, the next step here. I'm going to do Arabic stories, inshallah. How to ensure ghusl is valid if hair gets tangled tightly when you try to wash it? That's fine. Just, just do as best as you can. Yeah, best as you can. And that, inshallah, is. La yukallifullah. Allah does not burden a person more than they can bear. First Umrah, end of the month. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah, you're going to enjoy it a lot. Trust me. You are going to enjoy it a lot. May Allah make it easy for you. Wa alaikum as -salam. Trust you well. Alhamdulillah. A man who likes a woman who he cannot marry, e.g. auntie, can he marry if husband passed away? You know, you're not, you're not allowed to marry your mums, your grandmas, your sisters, your daughters, your nieces, 
your aunties. You're not allowed to marry them. Even if they're unmarried, you can't marry them. And if he does it, is shirk or is he out of Islam? And if he does it, he's not a shirk, not out of Islam. He's sinful. Would something still be considered backbiting if the person you mentioned a matter to doesn't know them? Yeah, then it won't be backbiting. Because the whole negative thing about backbiting is, is that it creates a negative image in the other person's head about that individual. So next time they meet them, they would have already had this negative image about them. What is the ruling on hijrah in our day, day and age? Allah knows best. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Because it's very difficult nowadays in the sense that where do you go? How do you go? Which country do you go to? Daniel, wa alaikum salam. What should one do when if he wasn't, doesn't use his phone, he misses fajr, and if he uses, he does haram? Then don't use your phone. If he doesn't use his phone, don't use the phone. Use an alarm. Get yourself an alarm. You can buy one cheap one on Amazon and use that. If a person's salah becomes qadha, do they still perform it or they can't because it's too late? If a person's salah becomes qadha, they must perform their qadha. Is ghusl and wudu valid if paint is left in the hair? Yes, it's valid. Is it cultural or sunnah that people make adhan in the ear of a newborn? No, it's, it's from the hadith. So they should do it ASAP when the child's born. Hoopers, wa alaikum as following up on the question about graduates and have weak Arabic, what advice to recommend to a senior alim student who wants to fix the Arabic? Okay, so if you want to fix your Arabic, what you need to do is, number one, start to go through Arabic stories on your own. Kids' Arabic stories and progressively go through year by year. Go through them and try to start writing Arabic yourself. Like, like Try to do creative writing in Arabic. Those are two things I definitely would recommend, honestly. Never underestimate, underestimate this. Still waiting for the link up day or start. Uh, okay, contact me, inshallah. Contact me tomorrow. And maybe, I think maybe this week, probably we'll do something. Yeah, if you're free this week. Yeah. How would I know that I'm doing a good job with reading comprehension when reading Arabic books? And do you know? So I would say, look, the only way you're going to know is you throw yourself in the deep end, isn't it? Don't be afraid. When you're learning a language, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's all good for you. It's all, it's all gain for you. There's no loss. So don't be afraid. Just get yourself in there and just start. Children's Arabic books you can get on a website called Tajura. Yes, yeah, called Tajura. Tajura. Uh, here's the website. So if you skim through there, you can have a look at which one. Just type in, the, go to the kids section, kids Arabic books. Regarding the Alimir graduates, poor Arabic, is your reading Ibarra series designed? Yeah, reading Ibarra series was designed for that. And many of the other things I put up on the YouTube, my YouTube channel is designed for people who find it hard to get good uh, in, the, in, the, in the Arabic. What did you study on the side during Ali Masjid? I studied nearly everything on the side. Like, I would say probably half of what I studied in Madrasa, I probably studied again on the side. That's simply because the teacher was, mashallah, very competent. Like, we are, like, honestly, without exaggeration, I told all my teachers, I probably never come across a teacher that was so competent. So, yeah, I, I studied everything again. Uh, not everything, half, I would say, half of. So many of the books I've studied twice. And how should students study privately, especially in the West? You say, hey, is it a good theory, but it's hard. You can do it online. Uh, so online, you can do it once a week. Right? You can do it once a week, once a month even. Uh, I remember I used to actually teach some students in America online. They contacted me. They wanted like uh, ikhtiyar classes. This was like, I think maybe like five, six years ago. I had more time and I would teach them and then unfortunately commitments were such that the class just dis dismantled for some reason yeah so uh, so it didn't really last that long but yeah it's possible online definitely if you get a few guys together and say look right we're committed once a week we're going to do like a one hour lesson with the sheikh somewhere and we're going to really go through something honestly you try it and with a good teacher and you will be able to taste ilm like seriously 
Is there anything on Curious Cat? Oh yeah, Curious Cat. Totally forgot. So many questions. Mashallah, you guys have asked. Okay, Curious Cat. I work for a corporate. They overpaid my two pounds in my final pay slip. If I go back and try to rectify this, it will be long HR. Yeah, just donate it. Yeah, so donate it. If it's going to cause too much hassle, just donate it. Welcome, Salam. I recently purchased some sweets. They are made by a non Muslim company, but they are vegan. However, in the pack, it's written made using a vegan recipe packed in a factory that handles gelatin products. Would that be okay? Yes, it's okay. Salam. Yes, it's okay. Uh, salam. Can you help me reply on the live stream? I know serving parents and family is really important in Islam, but I keep making mistakes and I'm scared of my parents dying. And then living life and regret. E.g., I have to do something, and they suddenly ask for my help, and I get annoyed because I want to do the task. I moan and I'm scared of falling under the people who say, "Oof." I eventually do the task, but a lot, uh, lost so much reward. How can I serve my parents better and be able to remember? Look, by you feeling this, this is a good sign. Yeah. So, salam. This is a good sign, and inshallah, uh, you will get reward. For your concern, for your concern and efforts. Yeah, so remember, look at this. If you're feeling as though I don't know if I've treated my parents right or not, that is a good sign. It's that means you you you're not doing it out of disrespect. You might just have mani anger management problems. You might just need a bit of just a bit more practice with your sabr. Yeah, but it's, it's not everyone's perfect in in being a child in the, a child of their parents. So inshallah. Make lots of dua to Allah. Try your best, inshallah. I dropped a small amount of blood into a container that had water. I used this water to wash my face and then I dried my face by using a towel. Does it improve transfer onto the towel or not? Since it was a small amount of blood and larger volume. Wassalam. Do you suffer from waswasa? From waswasa. Because you gotta, gotta find this out now because a lot of times I answer a question and the what's what's the guys it's like triggers like a rush. Is it allowed to request discount on Islamic courses even though you have enough money? It won't be sinful, but morally, I think uh, it would be good to pay the full price if it's uh, within. Your means, yeah. So, look, if someone asking someone for a an, a discount is fine, it's totally permissible. But if you just want to ask for a discount for the sake of asking for a discount, then it's not it's not really a nice thing to do, right? And you know, the other person might feel bad. The other person might feel like you know they have to give you a discount. So I would say, if you really need a discount, definitely, of course. Is it Islam permissible to castrate animals which are halal to eat? Yes. Is it permissible to sterilize animals and hope? Yes. Both are yes. Assalamu alaikum. Is it permissible for me to pray Dhuhr about 20 25 minutes before Asr time? Uh, the reason is for that I already come home from school. Yes, you can. Salam. Yes, you can. Uh, ya Allah. Okay. How about if they're generally Hanafi, but I want to combine prayers and wipe over socks? Uh, as long as they're not doing anything that goes against Islam. And goes against the four schools. You can try to educate them in your fiqh. <laughs> okay, salam. Please answer on here. Can I regularly say Allahumma salli ala, ala Sayyidina Isa? Yes, you can, but you won't get the same reward as the durood. On the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can send salutations, it's fine. Uh, but you obviously won't get the 
is the belief that the Prophet ﷺ knowing when the hour is acceptable. Is the belief that the Prophet ﷺ has complete ability to do as he pleases acceptable. Is the belief that the Prophet ﷺ is made of light acceptable. Is the belief. So these are kind of ilm and kalam questions. So I don't really kind of answer these kind of questions. Assalamu alaikum. Sometimes it seems like when I pass wind, a minuscule amount of urine leaks out on private parts. I also deal with in, urine incontinence. Uh, and as of, should I change my undergarment or ignore it? Wassalam. If it happens regular, you can put uh, tissue your underwear. And you don't need to keep changing them. Okay, khalas, 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 done. So, uh, uh, questions which are aqidah questions that are sort of like very controversial issues, I don't go into them. So, I just I tell you guys all the time because so live streams are not for that. These are for classes. Structured classes, yeah. So it's going to questions regarding these, which is clear, sort of like you know um, controversial issues around it, and a lot of people are going to get confused and not understand. Okay, um, why is ghusl valid if paint is left in the hair? Because obviously, if water can't take it out, then you know how are you going to get it out? You can't get it out, can you? So therefore, your ghusl is done. For women's hair, women do not have to wash their hair. That's the thing in Wasan. According to Hanafis, they don't have to wash their hair. Sudais, wa alaikum as salam. I have started learning Arabic from my teacher, Medina, read the books. How can I achieve fluency then? So, inshallah, I would say speak to your teacher. The way that he teaches you, all, that, that, that's the primary thing that you need to focus on. Try to get him to give you extra homework. Try to get him to give you extra work to do as well. Sorry for all the backbiting questions. Last one. There are any backbiting of a non-Muslim? So backbiting a non-Muslim in a non-Muslim country is, is not considered to be sinful. Must a person dump jugs of water onto their hair for ghusl or can they run their fingers through their hair? So as long as you take scoops of water and you pour it over your hair and you try to get your hand in through all the roots, that suffices. Darloom, would Darloom be a good path to take after high school? It depends. I mean, if you want to go into that, if there's a good Darloom there, then inshallah, why not? I would say, first of all, before you go into it, thoroughly learn what happens in a Darloom, what is studied, what is achieved at the end of it, before you go into it. Just like you would do if you're going to go to university or get a job. Masir Ali, wa alaykum the issue is tamasuk with the tradition without understanding the purpose of the tradition or what it stood for. Yeah, I agree with you, bro. Salaib of Allah, do you think that another Nahu book after Hidayah Nahu is required? Uh, it, it just depends. I mean, it depends how much the teacher has implemented it. So if you can take a verse of the Quran or a, an Arabic sentence and you can break down the tarkib and explain all the Nahu rules in that verse, you do not need to go beyond Nahu Hidayat Nahu. I would say, you don't have to. You see, it all depends upon how the book was taught. How to be fluent in English plus which are the Arabic cartoons? I don't know how to be fluent in English, my brother. Maybe someone else who's an English teacher can help. Plus, which are the Arabic cartoons? Go onto YouTube and type in Arabic cartoons. What are your thoughts on Anwar al Bayan? I haven't gone through it. How does one develop creative writing skills in Arabic? So, what you do is, you simply just read Arabic text, close it, and then from your mind, you try to write out whatever you remember from there. Then you read it again, then you close it, and then you try to write more. And then try to do this about three times. And then what you do is you try to take snippet sentences, and then you try to use that to write yourself some nice new sentences. So if you checked out my uh, Malfluti series, my Malfluti, Series and short Arabic stories series. I've got my YouTube channel. Check them out. Thoughts on Medina Arabic reading books? Very good. Go for it. Study. How does one develop a strong understanding of fiqh during the Alimiya course? Uh, I think it's all about teacher. 
Teachers are extremely important in fiqh. Never underestimate a teacher if you're learning fiqh. The teacher has to have passion in fiqh. The teacher has to be very well versed in fiqh themselves. Okay, I'm going to go off Instagram now. So Instagram people take care, inshallah. Alright, So it's very important You need to have a really good teacher Honestly, never understand Don't just say, oh the teacher has covered a bit of it You can study with the teacher who just Can explain the, the masala That's fine But if you really want to get into fiqh and you want to master it You need to sit with, like with any science Dennis, wa alaikum as brother, can a Muslim take loan from the bank to start a business in a non-Muslim country? I would say, look, if a Muslim business, there's no way for them to get that money. They've tried hard. It's very difficult for them to be able to start that business. They've tried their best. Then as a last resort, I would say there is possibly permissibility for this. Yeah. What I would suggest is what you do, Dennis, contact a scholar privately present your situation to them and then they'll be able to give you a more precise answer because this is not like something that you can give a general answer to it's, it's more to do with a case by case how one develop a strong understanding of hadith you know what I mean? because again you need to have good teacher honestly you need to have a good teacher <clears throat> i can give you like a skeleton of what you need to cover but you need the teacher needs to be there to inject that knowledge into you directly into your veins that's what you need yeah, so if you want to study hadith really good, what you need to understand is first of all, you need to be very, 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 very familiar. So there's two sciences in, in hadith. There's ilm al riwayah and ilm al diraya. Ilm al riwayah is basically going through the matan of hadith. Right? So cover riyadu salihin. Cover to cover. Cover bulugh al maram. Cover to cover. Cover mishkat al masabih. Cover to cover. Cover Sahih al-Bukhari cover to cover. Cover Sahih Muslim cover to cover. Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood. Yeah? Cover them cover to cover. Number two is you need Ilmu Diraya. Ilmu Diraya is the science of Usul Hadith. You need to have a very well structured syllabus of Usul Hadith with Takhrij practice as well. Takhrij practice. Now once you've mastered that and you've got a really good teacher, there's nothing stopping you, inshallah. You'll do very, very well. But if you study Hadith like this, where a teacher will simply translate the hadith and then maybe just mention some ikhtilafats, fiqh ikhtilafats, and then that's it, carry on, and do a bit of nasiha. That's not really science of a sul hadith. That's something you can probably do with general lay public. And tafsir. Tafsir is also something which I would say requires the same expertise. It's tafsir, you need to cover the whole of the Quran and understand what every ayah is saying. That's the first thing. Secondly, you need to go through uh, some basic tafsir. For example, go through Safwat al-Tafasir cover to cover. And maybe after Safwat al-Tafasir, selections of Ruh al-Ma'ani, certain chapters of Ruh al-Ma'ani go through. Go through with a teacher. Go through certain chapters of um, Tahrir al-Tanweer. Go through certain chapters of uh, maybe even Kashaf, Qurtubi. Tafsir ibn Kathir. Right? So you go through chapters, and inshallah, that should be something that should suffice. Inshallah. Yeah. So hopefully, inshallah, by, by doing that, you're going to benefit immensely. Uh, your thoughts on Durus Lawat al Arabiya. Yeah. Very good. Go for it. I mean, all these books, honestly, if you study it properly, you can learn Arabic very good. Right. So there's not like a magic book that like a magic pill, you take it and that's it, you're going to become a master Arabic. No, you have to You have to put all the effort in. You've got to have a good teacher. Put the effort in. How to quit sins? Let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People can stop sinning themselves. But the problem is that the addiction to sins is the hard thing. Your company, maybe it's your company, maybe it's your mobile phone that you've got. Maybe it's being alone in a room. These are kind of reasons possibly. Do you think Jalalain is enough? I've heard students should develop no, no, you need comparative tafsir. Comparative is very important. And madrasas just do jalalain and that's it. They think, mashallah, you know, la quwwata illa billah. So you, honestly, you need to do comparative. You need to get students comfortable in being able for them to read 
In Asufa, what we do is in year four, we get students to actively read these tafsirs themselves. And they come to lesson and they're prepared. Right? You give them assignments on, on these tafsirs. Get your teacher to give you an assignment on Ruhan Ma'ani, a section of it. Wa alaikum as ahlan wa sahlan. How do I ass- assess the outcome of istikhara? So istikhara is very straightforward. If you're going to get married to someone, if you're going to buy a car, you go, you check them out, you check the car out fully. As long as you're happy with it, you do istikhara. Once you've done istikhara, you go for it. Do not wait for any sign, any dream, nothing. Just go for it. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith. Yeah, And some scholars say that you look for a sign or a dream. I would say you don't have to do any of that. Because that is very confusing to the general public. Uh, can a person put a YouTube video to of adhan into the baby's ear? Can a woman also? I would say no. Just like you know, the the whole practice of of for example adhan is that a human gives it, is it? So anyone can do it. The parents can do it. The father can do it. There's no father. Mother can even do it. Can a woman also? Yes, inshallah. If there's no male, then woman can do it. Barakallah fi Shaykh, some advice, really appreciate it. Uh, in those private classes, do you think student reading books to the teacher, teacher asking? Yes, I think that is very good. Try to get that. That's what you need. You need a, the student, if they've gone through an Alimiya course or they're going through one, they, they already have this a bit of skills of, 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 of reading and a bit of research. They just need to hone in on that, I would say. 18. How do I overcome anxiety in leading Salah, public speaking? Um, so I don't know exactly how anxiety is overcome because that's not my specialty, my field. But I would generally say if you want to overcome shyness or lack of confidence in public speaking, leading Salah, you need to put yourself there as much as you can. Put, the more you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, the better you're going to become. Remember that. That's a key days. The more you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, take yourself out of your comfort zone. You might be an introvert. If you're an introvert, you've got to work harder. But put yourself in uncomfortable. I would say do this every single day if you can, or every single few days. Try to you know, just go to some people that you feel really shy of speaking in front of and just say some things to them. Like, obviously, not, not, not anything bad. Try to get yourself. Why does Ibn Abi Dirad al Muhtar read like the Talmud? Why is Fatwa so? I have never read the Talmud, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Why is Fatwa so hard line? Like, I, I don't, I wouldn't. If you can give some examples of, of what you mean. Are you aware of any hadith about not making your feet far apart in Salat? Um, I can't think of any. Alaikum assalam. Go to bed. Kaz Mataz, alaikum assalam. Why so late? I see, man, this is what we do, guys. This is what we do. This is what I do for you people. This is my love for you people. In a nutshell, what things should current Alimi students focus on? Make sure they graduate with proper ilm and not just certificate book subjects. So there's outcomes and you want to look at outcomes. What outcome do you want? So for example, in tafsir, you want the outcome to be able to pick up a tafsir and to be able to read a tafsir. Um, and you, you want to be able to pick any ayah in the Quran and you want to at least be able to translate what it's saying and give a little bit of explanation of the context of it. The same with hadith and the same with you know, these kind of sciences. You want there to be an outcome. What are the outcomes? Uh, can you tell me a proper schedule to learn Arabic? I'm doing the Medina books on my own. Finish the Medina books, inshallah. Once you finish those, then come back to me. How does one develop a strong understanding of each science during the Alimiya course? Yeah, I think I explained that earlier on. Can you explain Abu Hanifa's Nabid al Fatwa? Why did later Hanafis put a ban on Nabid? The early Fatwa of Abu Hanifa was there, but later Hanafis coped too much so it wasn't later Hanafis it was Hanafis in the you know when you say later you mean after the 300s yeah after the 300s so so this is a big this is a big uh, I've actually explained this in the past before yeah and it requires a lot of time to explain 
Uh, but the thing is, look, in the Hanafi school, not everything Abu Hanifa has taken, has said, is something that is taken. Sometimes Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, would give a particular answer. Like, for example, the Nabi's answer. Nabi is fine according to Hanafis. As long as it doesn't intoxicate you. That's the issue. If it intoxicates you, intoxicating Nabi, right? Abu Hanifa himself even says, if you were to drink Nabi, knowing it's intoxicating, for recreational purposes, it's not allowed. Makru tahrim, sinful. So I think people misunderstand what the Hanafis actually say. So when people say, for example, oh, later Hanafis have become too strict. Not, that's not necessarily true. It's they misunderstood what the Hanafis are actually saying and how Hanafi fatwa works. That's what it is. So for, I'll give you an example. Abu Hanifa said, you can't charge to teach Quran. You can't charge money to be an imam. You can't charge to give adhan. But later Hanafis allowed it. They said you can. Because times changed, because circumstances changed. Uh, why women do not have to wash their hair for ghusl to be valid? Have I heard that correctly? That's right. There's the water. So the, so the Prophet Sallallahu one day Ummi Salma's wife said to him that, you know, do we have to wash our hair with our plaits? And the Prophet Sallallahu says, so long as the water reaches your scalp, he says, so long as the water reaches your scalp. This is a very well documented masala in the Hanafi fiqh. So in other words, the Prophet was saying to his wife, as long as water gets to your scalp, you don't have to wash your hair. This is a ruling Hanafi says only for women. Uh, okay, so did you say women don't have to wash their hair? That's right. Did Zufar ibn Hudayl allow nikah al muakkat So, no. Did allow muakkat As in, did he allow it as in saying it's totally jai, no sin behind it? No. Never said that. Did he say that if a person was to do it, would the nikah go through? Yes, he said that. So, so I think what happens is a lot of people, they, 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 they may watch the Hanafi madhab as spectators, but because they haven't engaged with Hanafi madhab, they, they, they see the Hanafi madhab as very strange. And hopefully, inshallah, we are going to unstrain Hanafi madhab. How often do you see yourself answering the same questions loads of times? That's why sometimes you guys just say, you know what, I've said, answered this before. I just want to do those ones. Shaykh, I think you need a, a if, you, if you can ask questions, the Hanafi Madhab and learning Arabic, I think I do, you know. Inshallah, I'm going to try to do that. What, have you seen some of those kind of clips I've been putting up, the one minute clips I've been taking from various videos? What books uh, of fiqh did you study under a teacher? Quduri, Ikhtiyar, Kanz, Sharh al-Wiqaya, uh, Hidayah, Sections of Radd al-Muhtar. Uh, tell us about Wakira, Feast for a New House. Is Quran Khani a Khatam?
just on the computer seeing things, the internet, things especially on the computer. Yeah, and the thing is, you have to remember a lot of people ask questions, they see as something really important. Like, the issue once wants their kind of be perspective on the issue, and trying to be like, not that they're allowed to. If there's a need for it, they're allowed to, but not just for that. So, Mecca, not for recreation. Remember, there were lots of non-Muslims living in Medina, even when the Prophet passed away. Is getting into politics a dangerous career path for a Muslim? No, I think it's important, especially nowadays in the West. It's very important. How many criminal Muslims do you have which you place them to go through? And this is very expensive. And you guys will be surprised to edit a two-hour live stream is probably possible. Easily do that. And it's not a very cheap, shoddy thing to do. Hand stamping would probably cost maybe, maybe as much as a hundred pounds. If it is good. Uh, so these kind of things are quite expensive. My audio has come to me and asked how to say strange Arabic. And Arabic is very, 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 since you answered that the books you have studied. Oh, okay, I'm gonna finish in a bit guys. Because it's a bit later as well, so I'm gonna have to work as well. I do have them on my end, all those big books you've studied, you have to do you study them comes to them. No, not not all comes to them. Some of them were sections of Do you ever use a dawa at the time of yes? Do you ever keep talking and reaching up to your head? So, those are background noise. It is very bad. It is very quiet. Okay, so I'm um, gonna have to go, guys. I'm gonna have to finish it there. Because uh, the mic is the charge is finished. I left it out. But it hasn't charged up. And it has a mic. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to plug it in. I'm gonna plug my other mic in. Mr. Mike Saab. Yeah, testing one, two, three. You guys can hear that now. So yeah, so basically, um, I think I'm gonna finish it there. So it's a bit late as well, and I think you guys, mashallah, your questions are not gonna are not gonna end. I don't know exactly where the sound disappeared. What question was it? The fig question, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's quite quite far back. Yeah. So um, just just to just to quickly just for those who asked the question, uh, actually no. I'll leave it. Next time, inshallah. Jalo khair. Inshallah, no one's going to die <laughs> not knowing the answer to a fit question, inshallah, in my live streams. Inshallah. So, jazakumullah khair, guys. May Allah bless all of you guys for tuning in. May Allah keep all of you guys happy. I do apologize if I have sounded a bit ab abrupt and answered some of your questions. So, what I would suggest, look, sometimes you guys have good questions. Um, and sometimes you guys can, can Google the questions, honestly. It's not very difficult to Google the questions. Right? Some of the kind of things that you guys can ask, you can it's easily just to Google it and find out things. Um, when it comes to learning the, the Arabic language, I would definitely say learn the Arabic language, but you've got to throw yourself in the deep end. Yeah, uh, and um, it's 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 basically you know something which which. Uh, which a lot of people need to learn over time. Like some of you guys, remember in the beginning, you used to come and ask all these kind of questions. And all of a sudden, when you were attending some of my lessons, that's it. You realize oh, a lot of the questions I was asking can easily be answered. So some of you guys, I would definitely recommend study something structured. If you want to learn about Hanafi fiqh, study Hanafi fiqh in a structured manner. Honestly, do at least one book with, with a good scholar. Then you get more familiar uh, with... Uh, with Hanafi works 
And that way, what, what basically what, what, what can happen is a lot of these questions that you have will easily be cleared up. There's a lot of people who have misunderstandings of the Hanafi school because they watch the Hanafi school as a spectator. And what you need to do is you need to um, you need to basically um, familiarize yourself with it. Yeah, that's all it is. And if you are studying in an Alimiya course or you graduated and you're, you feel you're very weak, read your books again. Start, start reading them on your own, inshallah. Anyway, guys, take care. Jazakumullah khair. I will see you guys next time. May Allah bless all of you guys and keep all of you guys happy, inshallah. And uh, hopefully I will uh, see you guys next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.